السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Hi guys, this is Dr. Ahmed teaching you B207A. I hope you are fine and safe. Guys, do you hear my voice? Yes, Doctor. Thank you. Can you see the screen well? Can you see the screen, guys? Hello. Yes. Yes, Doctor. Okay, let's start. Anyway, this is actually the last chapter. This is week 14, so this is the end of this course. Inshallah, I'm going later on to deliver a revision class, okay? But for now, we need to finish the course by discussing week 14. Today, guys, we will discuss actually the supply chain management. Supply chain management. So we need to manage the supply chain in a way to be effective and efficient. So the, the first question that you may ask, the meaning of supply chain. Well, there are different definitions for the supply chain management. Anyway, if you say, it's about the management of the flow, the goods, data, and finances related to the products and services from the procurement, from the pre-procurement uh, pre of raw materials to the delivery of products at its final destination. This is right. If you say that supply chain management it's about everything okay you do or you need to bring new products to the market effectively and efficiently this is also right and this also means that you need to manage your what suppliers and the partners in the chain so let me make let's say the definition let's say more simple supply chain management it's all it's about all the activities that you need okay in order to make sure that you have the products that the customer needs at the right time and at the right place that's why here they're saying what? Supply chain management encompasses the planning and the management of all activities involved in what? Sourcing and procurement. The meaning of sourcing and procurement is what? Okay. Now, as a company, let's say you are producing, let's take example actually from here. Okay. This is, suppose, suppose, this is your company. You are manufacturing. Okay, you are manufacturing what? Suppose that you are manufacturing, for example, I'm saying, for example, uh, um, home furniture. Home furniture, if that means it. Specifically, you are manufacturing tables. Okay, well, in order to manufacture the tables, or dining, let's say, tables, you want what? You want materials, right? You want wood, you want wooden boards, for example. Not only this, but for example, we need wooden boards. This wooden boards actually need, uh, we need to have this wooden boards from, from what? From the suppliers. Meaning the suppliers, so the suppliers actually will give us what? The wood that we need or, or the wooden boards that we need to use to manufacture the dining table, right? This is the supplier job. The supplier or the So the suppliers actually are responsible to offer us actually with what? With the right materials 
or semi-finished goods or raw materials that we need to manufacture a product. So in this case, as a manufacturer, we need to have maybe one supplier or maybe 10 suppliers. It's not only the wooden boards that we need. We need also add many other stuff, right? Yes. Then we do our job. We manufacture the tables or the dining table, right? The, once we are done, okay, we may actually sell these items immediately to customers, which is possible. This is possible. Or maybe we will actually sell it to what the wholesalers or immediately to the retail, re, actually retailers. So as you can see, this is the supply chain management. The, at the end, this is the customer that we need to satisfy his or her or their needs and wants. And at the beginning, we have suppliers. And maybe it's not only one supplier, maybe more than one. And by the way, even the suppliers has what? Some other suppliers sometimes. Okay, that's why we need to make sure, okay, that we do this job or we manage this chain in a way to be effective and efficient, okay, by satisfying customer needs and wants, okay, as it's supposed to be. That's why, let's get back now to definition. It's about all activities involved in sourcing, you remember the suppliers, and procurement, buying the products or the stuff and the items and materials from the suppliers. Then you do your job conversion, okay? You do your job, you do your manufacturing, okay? And all logistics, once you are doing with, once you are done with the manufacturing, you are giving or you are sending the products to the wholesalers or retailers or agents, okay? So all logistics management activities. This means you are sending the products, what? To the customers and hopefully you are satisfying the, the customer needs and wants. And this also means that you need to know how to manage the relationships with what? with the channel partners, meaning the channel partners. Yes, this is the channel partners, guys. This is the channel partners, supplier, manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, and maybe you have some more and the customer, okay? So you need to know how to manage the relationship with the channel partners in a way that we all achieve our mutual goals. So if I need to make this definition say more clear i need to say supply chain management actually it's about the way okay the way to satisfy or let's say the way to manage the supply and demand to manage the supply and demand the supply from our companies suppliers from the manufacturer and so on and the demand from what uh, eventually from the customers. This is the main thing about supply chain management. Hopefully it's clear to you. Is it clear, guys? You understand now the meaning of supply chain management, how, how, to man how you need to manage this relationship between the supply chain uh, partners in a way to satisfy the customer needs and wants. Is it clear, guys? Clear. Hello. Yes. Okay. So because we understand that the supply chain management includes what more than one, let's say, uh, stage, as we see, supplier, manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, and the customer, potentially. So this is our job to make sure that we optimize, okay, this supply chain as a whole. This means what? This means, again, let's get back to the, the, the chain. Supplier, for example, supplier, manufacturer, wholesaler, retailer, and the consumers. If we need to do the, our job in an efficient way, we need to make sure that we all working together, okay, to enhance our efficiency. So this means we all need to share the information and we need all to understand the different actual requirements actually of different stages. So 
this mean this means that the supplier and the manufacturer and the wholesaler and the retailer and the customer needs to manage their efforts in a way to be efficient suppose the supplier actually is doing the best and the manufacturer is not doing the best suppose the, the supplier and the manufacturer is doing the things as it's it's supposed to be but many delays and many problems and many issues come from the wholesaler we will have a problem eventually because it's a chain we need all to do it right if one of the if one of the stages actually was not right this will affect the whole chain the whole performance that's why we need to make sure that we do it do it right actually from all sides and that's why we need to make sure that we are minimizing as much as we can the different delays that may happen in any source in any stage that's why we this is our job this is actually the idea of throughput efficiency to what to minimize the what the delay or the waste that we, you may have in the chain in order again to be efficient okay in this market to understand more about this definition or this concept the throughput efficiency and how to minimize actually any problem or issues in that thing we need to discuss and to consider this example okay we have 15 students okay anyway it's recorded so i will share it with you later on type this is example actually about what the bibs or you can consider cola coca-cola or you can consider kinza now there is kinza i think you know you know kinza guys you, you know that new brand it's not new but yeah it becomes more popular kinza are you aware of kinza cola it's like Pepsi. It's like that, yes. I think Kinder. brand Saudi. I think Saudi it's brand. Saudi. It is, I think, and it, it is, yani, it is good. Yani, as And, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of actually these things, but as I got from the family, they like it. They like it. Yani, it was good. Did you try it? Yes. Yes. How, how was your feedback? It was uh, very good. I think it's... Uh... And yeah, very good uh, substitute. Okay, very well. So let's actually encourage our Saudi actually products. This is a good thing. Yeah, if if you don't buy the Saudi products, who will buy it, right? So we need actually to encourage the customers and to make them actually support the producers in Saudi Arabia. So let's take this for example, Kinza or or the Pepsi. No problem. Okay, suppose this is what this store, this store, this is in America, but in, in Saudi Arabia, suppose we need to consider what Hyperbenda store. Okay, so this here, you can use Hyperbenda store. Harry Kalam, okay. So now, uh, 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 suppose Fahed, okay, wants to have Pepsi. So we'll go to Benda or Hyperbenda or Uthaim or Tamimi, right? Or any store, any retailer. And you buy the Pepsi or the Kenza or any kind of juice. But now, now we talk about this uh, Pepsi, for example. So Fahid bought it. Okay. This is what we see. And Fahid bought Pepsi. And hopefully there is some recycling here. This is what we know, right? That's it. What 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 the other stuff before that? We don't know. The other stuff after that, we're not sure about it. Fine. Because we said supply chain management is something, it's important. Supply chain management is important, actually, definition, you know, that's what. Fine. Let's consider now the procedure from beginning. This can actually is made of what? Aluminium, right? Aluminium. So this aluminium is coming from what? From the mining, right? You mine. Okay, once I say mine, means what? Um, in like you extract, right? This or that material or the aluminium. Okay, so mining يعني تعديم إنك تستخرج المواد الأولية للألمنيوم من الأرض. Okay, so that's the extraction, the mining that you extract that aluminium actually as important material that you need. Okay, to produce what the, the can or the pips. 
after the mining, I know this is not yani, this is a technical thing, but just to understand mining, then reduction mill. Okay, reduction mill. Once I say reduction, this means you yani, uh, these kind of actions that you may do in the factories or using specific tools or actually yani, stuff uh, to make the, the, the things or the material smaller. Okay, smaller in terms of size, مثلا, or degree. Anyway, so this is the reduction mill. Then use then the smelter or melting and يعني you, you do the melting. Okay. Then after hot rollers. Say Then the cold rollers. Okay. So هاي الماتيريز اللي كطلعناها من الأرض مثلاً صارت صفائح ممكن استعمالها. Then we, we, we send it to the can maker اللي هو بيصنع العلبة بيصنع العلب. اوكي okay. تفكر شركه مثلا البيبسي ولا شركه العصير هي تنتج على علبها مش بالضروره اوكي سو ذا كان ميكر سو نيد سبيسيفيك ماتيريالز اكشلي سو ذي ويل هاف ذيس اكشلي رولرز ذن ذي ميك اور مانيفاكتشرنج ايش الكانز او البيبسي كان او الكنزا كان او الكولا كانز اوكي ذن وي ويل اكشلي ديليفر ات وير تو ذا وير هاوس نحطها في المخازن Then we sell it to the Pepsi company or bottler or the Coca-Cola or the Kinza. Then we'll be in the warehouse. Then what? We will actually what? Put the Pepsi. Okay. Uh, now it's now it's actually ready. Let's say Pepsi, ready Cola, ready Kinza. It's a ready can now. خلاص. You can sell it. So. After that, we can deliver to the Hypervenda store. Sorry, Hypervenda warehouse, let's say. Okay. Or Tesco. Then from the warehouse, we'll go to what? To the store itself, to Benda or to Uthim or to Tamimi or any store. Then Fahid actually bought the Pepsi. Then enjoy the Pepsi or the Kenza or the Cola. After that, hopefully, there is what? Some recycling. Again, remember the smelter? So it's re-melter, remember. It's about re it's about melting, but re-melting again because already you have it as a can now. You will remelt it again to have it as a whole hot roller, then the cold roller, and again the same procedure. Do, do you see, guys, how it's important to understand the supply chain management and how it's actually really a complex a little bit in a way? So it's not only the can you have from the fridge or from the, the store. No, you need to do it right. You, you need to do the all the, 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 the efforts in order to make sure that you are doing the steps in the right way. Any problem, guys, any problem in any stage, we will have a problem. Suppose the mining and reduction mill and the smelter was good. Then we have some delay here, so we'll have a problem. Or if we have the delay here, we will have a problem. If we do all the things right and we have delay here, so we will have a problem and maybe the customers will not have the product as he or she needs at the right time, at the right place, at the right store. Hopefully, you understand, guys, now the supply chain management through this example. Is it clear? Hello? Yes. Very well. So this is, guys, as you see, the meaning and the significance of supply chain management and how you need to manage the relationship, actually, uh, of, yeah, or you need to make sure that you actually maximize, let's say, the uh, cooperation, okay, between the supply chain partners in a way to be efficient and very well. Now we need to understand another topic called the bull web effect. Well, bull web effect is a problem. Okay, yeah, and we hope that we don't have this problem, but it happens. Okay, that's a problem, and we may maybe we may actually reduce it or minimize it, but at the end of the day, we will always have this problem. Okay, bull web effect means what? Means Demand fluctuations magnify through the supply chain. Okay, what do you mean by that, Dr. Ahmed? Well, always 
ديماند فلكشويشنز والهبل تقلبات الطلب دائما هناك تقلبات الطلب اوكي ديماند فلكشويشنز هبل اول ذا تايم بيكوز اوف ذا سيزونز بيكوز اوف ذا بروموشنز اولويز ذير از ذير ار سم فلكشويشنز فور ون ريزن اور انذر The problem, it's not only in the demand fluctuations because it's normal to have some demand fluctuations. The problem that these fluctuations, okay, may appear, okay, in a way it's not right or in a way it does not reflect the true fluctuations. Maybe the fluctuations, let's say if we, if we, if we need to make it as a percentage, maybe we have 5%, let's say less or يعني more as a fluctuations. But the problem, We don't see the 5% as a 5%. We see the 5% as a 20 or 30%. That's why we will have a problem. Because we understand that, or we think, you say, we think, okay, that there is fluctuation and it's about 30% more, maybe. But actually, this 30%, it's 5%. And because this false understanding or false, actually, uh, idea, We will make some other procedures according to the 30%. We will do production and logistics. And eventually, it's not 30%. And what we have done was not right. It's about a problem. Example. You may ask Dr. Ahmed about the example. طيب. This is the fluctuations. Again, supplier will de deliver the, some materials to the manufacturer. where manufacturing actually ha happens. Then we send the product to the wholesaler, like Pepsi, then the retailer, then the customers, okay? Now, this is what, this is the delivery. This is what? Delivery cycle, oh, sorry, okay, sorry. This is delivery cycle, okay? Now, what about the orders? You need to understand some, some, something. In business, we have something called derived demand طلب مشتق it's derived from what from customers what what do you mean customers will make the order from the store store will make the order from the wholesaler wholesaler will make the order from the manufacturer manufacturer will make the order from the suppliers and so on if you have more suppliers or or, or more the same stages طيب يعني can you give me example doctor very 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 simple actually This is actually, again, this is the fluctuations. As you can see here, this is the sales from the store, here, the store, okay? According to this graph, the fluctuation is high or a little bit normal? Very normal, okay, fluctuations. And تقلبات بس مالها شوي صح؟ تقلبات مش حادة شوي تقلبات. Almost ما فيش تقلبات إلا قليلا. The problem, guys, is because of the bull web effect. This is fluctuations, as you can see now. Can you see the mouse, guys? Yes. This here, the fluctuations, malha or the قلبات مالها. شو يعني تقلبات؟ تقلبات الطلب يعني. تقلبات الطلب زيادة أو نقصة. أنتم لاحظين معي تقلبات هنا إيش مالها؟ تقريبا منخفضة جدا صح؟ شوفوا معي الآن. بسبب the bull web effect. لانه بصير تعظيم لهي التقلبات بشكل مش منطقي. لاحظوا معي هاي التقلبات الصغيره شو صارت الان هنا؟ ماي جاد. الان اذا انت نظرت هنا شو بتفكر انه في تقلبات كبيره صح؟ احكوا لي صح يلا. صح؟ ايوه صح ايوه بس هل هاي التقلبات صحيحه؟ يلا رح تجاوبوني. لا لاحظ معي المبيعات بالمعرض التقلبات منخفضه. بس هنا الطلب صار اكبر مما هون يعني ستور اوردر فروم ذا هول سيلر يعني المحل او الماركت لما عمل الاوردر بناء على هاي التقلبات الزائده مثلا عملها باكبر مما ينبغي يعني بجوز الزياده هون 5% راح عمل اوردر ب 20% مثلا او 15% راح الهول سيلر عمل اوردر ثاني من المنتج لاحظوا معي او ماي جاد التقلبات شو صارت كبيره عملاقه اوكي حاد جدا شارب ناو عمل اوردر مش ب 15% اللي فهمها عمل 20% او 25% راح الهول سيلر عفوا المانيفاكتشرر طلب اوردر من السبلايرز لاحظوا معي لاحظوا لاحظوا شارب تشينج ناو 
and fluctuations بجوز ال 25 مي صارت 35 و40% علما انه التغير في الطلب كان عباره عن ايش 5% هون شو صار 40% this is a problem طب ليش هيك صار طيب maybe because wrong understanding maybe because actually false reflection of the true actually uh, case maybe because of the promotion maybe because of many reasons maybe because of the expectations anyway we have a problem this is why bullwhip bullwhip effect is a problem and this is why we need to make sure that we minimize it as much as you can طيب how to minimize this problem خلاص we understand and this is a problem and hopefully we do some uh, actions to reduce or minimize this problem or as we call it demand amplifications okay. and like one of the way to reduce this problem okay or minimize this effect reduce the number of stages in the supply chain يعني قال لك ما هو كل ما التشين صارت طويله صرنا صار عندنا معلومات خاطئه لانه العميل بيشتري من التاجر التجزئه او الريتيلرز بعدين تاجر التجزئه بيعمل اوردر من الهول سيلر بعدين الهول سيلر من المانيفاكتشر بعدين المانيفاكتشر من السبلاير قال لك لو انه ما فيش مثلا عندنا مثلا لو ما فيش عندنا سبلاير عفوا هول سيلر كل ما صارت اصغر الشبكه كل ما كان الخطا اقل وكل ما كان تعظيم هاي الاخطاء اقل اوكي لانه بس عندك direct actually contact with the other stage and hopefully that direct contact will minimize this problem or this actually magnify or this actually uh, fluctuations this is one of the way and like the second way in sharing demand information across the supply chain if you give us clear and exact information about the demand we will not have a problem if you told us from beginning that we have some increase and it is 5% and this 5% increase because it's it's maybe because okay this and that so we understand that we don't need to make this extra let's see order as expected sales so if you share more the information with the other members this will help to minimize any problem three Generating smaller, more frequent replenishment orders. قال لك إذا إذا كان الأوردر بينطلق كل ثلاث أشهر مثلاً هذا بيعمل مشاكل ما هو أكيد لما أنا بدي أعمل أوردر لكل ثلاث أشهر لأن أنا غير مدرك شو حيصير بالسوق 100% بالمية فحخليني هذا أتوقع إيجاباً أو سلباً مبيعات زيادة أو نقصان بالتالي أعمل أوردر بناء على ذلك فقال لك كل ما خليت الأوردر في وقت أقل يعني بدل ما يكون الأوردر كل ثلاث أشهر من المنتج مثلا خليه مثلا كل شهر بدل كل شهر خليه كل اسبوعين اول شيء بتوفر مساحات في التخزين شغله اضافيه تمام يعني انت بتعطي تفصيل اكبر عن الديماند المتوقع والقادم نمبر 3 اور 4 ريديوسينج ذا ليد تايمز اي دونت نيد اكشلي تو هاف اكشلي ماتش تايم تو هاف ماي برودكت هوبفولي وانس اي اوردر ماي برودكت اي هاف ات as soon as possible because the long lead times make also problem because it, it takes time to have the product the product that's why sometimes i may order more because i know it takes time okay finally now this point limiting promotions that create demand actually fluctuations i i am not i actually i am against this point because No, we need to do promotion. It, the problem is not with the promotion. The problem actually that you don't actually share the information in, in, in the right way with the other members. Imagine that I need to stop in promotion. How, how, how can I sell more products? So I need to make promotion, but if you need to do promotion, we need to make to be ready for that. Okay, guys, is it clear to you? Yes. Right, very well. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> Type now we need to discuss vertically integrated supply chains. Vertical 
integration vertical integration ليش قلنا vertical integration اه لاحظوا معي الان هذول السبلاي تشين اوكي ماتيريال اكستراكشن هذا سبلاير طبعا اوكي ماتيريال بروسيسنج اوكي سبلاير كومبوننت برودكشن سبلاير اولسو اوكي مانيفاكتشر ريمبر ذا مانيفاكتشر مانيفاكتشر اوكي اور اسمبلي ذن وير ذن اكشلي وير هاوسينج ذن ديستريبيوشن ذن ذا ريتيلر ذن ذا كاستمر طيب وانس وي توك اباوت ذا فيرتيكال انتجريشن وي توك اباوت to own one of one of the one of the definition is to own the other members check if any okay maybe you are manufacturing vintage okay and you might think you know you know what i will buy my for example my uh, retailer or i may buy my supplier Now, why you want to do this? Actually, many explanation for that, and many reasons can support that. Okay, but I need to understand first of all the meaning of vertical integration, which means actually that you may buy one of the partners in the supply chain. Maybe you are the manufacturer and you want to buy the wholesaler, or you want to buy the wholesaler and the retailer, or you want to buy. one of the supplier all all suppliers okay this is depends on your decision so this is actually the meaning of vertical integration now they said here to address how much of the supply chain one company or organization should own there are three important consideration to be considered okay we have three important consideration The first consideration is what? Uh, just a minute, guys. Just a minute. Let me just close the door. طيب first of all the direction of any further intended integration you want to buy what you want to buy your suppliers or you want to buy your actually uh, sorry i have a lecture guys طيب so this is the question you want to buy your suppliers or you want to buy your distributors or customers that's a question why is there a difference yes for sure if you want to buy your suppliers okay this this called what upstream integration it's this is called upstream integration why because you are buying this is this is upstream if you are here okay if you are the manufacturer if you want to buy suppliers this is the suppliers so this is actually called upstream integration this means you are buying what your suppliers okay this is the suppliers or you want to buy actually your distributors like the wholesale the retailer okay so this is actually or your customer this is what this is actually downstream downstream okay so the first consideration is or you, and you want to buy both of them i think it's hard and expensive okay or you so you need to know or we need to know actually you want to do upstream integration you are buying your suppliers and how many of you okay before how many just now the definition upstream your suppliers or you want to buy the downstream or your distributors then the extent of this integration خلاص you may you may say i, I want to do upstream integration i, I buy My suppliers, or you want to, you might you might say you know what I will do downstream, so you will buy actually distributors or the customers. So now the question, the extent of integration, yeah, 
how much you want to buy down, downstream or upstream. So when we then need to address how far upstream, how far downstream, okay, you want to buy your suppliers. A day, one, one suppliers, yani only, only the direct suppliers or the other suppliers, like here. This is, this is you, manufacturing. This is supplier. Let's say supplier level A. This is the supplier for your supplier. Then this is the supplier for the supplier of your supplier. So three levels. So you want to buy only the, the direct supplier or you want to buy also the, let's say, the, uh, the level two supplier and level three. That's a question. You want to buy only the wholesaler or you want to buy the wholesaler and the retailer? That's a question. So this is the second question. So the extent of the integration means how far upstream, how far downstream we need to have. That's a question. طيب. Number three in consideration, the balance of the integration. We need to address how much capacity to have at each actually tier in the supply chain. طيب. We have here supplier. You want to buy all your suppliers here? Suppose you have five suppliers here at the same level. Okay. Suppose you have five suppliers. You want to buy the five suppliers. Can you do that? Or you might buy only one or two out of five or five out of ten. That's the third consideration. Is it clear, guys? Hello, guys. Is it clear? Yes, doctor. Alhamdulillah. Now we need to come to the outsourcing. Now we need to come to the out to the outsourcing. And the first thing you may say, what's Dr. Ahmed the meaning of outsourcing? Well, outsourcing, it's about the external source for having the product, okay, from outside source. That's the meaning actually, simply, this is the meaning. Or you might say you are having or obtaining the goods and the services, okay, by a contract from outside supplier. So you have a contract with other company to give you the product or to make the product for you. That's why we call it outsourcing. That's why it's called outsourcing, external source. External supplier, external actually source. Uh -huh. They said here what? Vertical integration that I have explained about having or, or, or buying maybe your supplier, sorry, your suppliers, okay, or your distributors. It's actually a solution in some way, uh, but it's not always the solution. So what to do? Sometimes you cannot buy your suppliers or you cannot buy your distributors. So what to do? We can we can have outsourcing. We can have this actually contracts with other companies to give us or to provide us with the products that we need, simply. That's why the city vertically integrated system are not always the solution in meeting the market needs. But what's the, the, the alternative thing? They said the main alternative to the vertical integration is what? is the outsourcing where the producers or the manufacturers having some contract or having contractual relationship with some other suppliers or external suppliers to give you or to give them what the products and the goods and the services they need simply this, this is the meaning okay this is the outsourcing and we have many examples about outsourcing okay Yani, I think here is there is a slide about examples. Uh, this is the examples. Okay, this is outsourcing. About this is outsourcing in the air travel. Okay, like like we said, we have companies for the car barking, companies for the baggage handling, some companies for the cleaning of the the uh, actually the the airport. Uh, some 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 outsourcing actually regarding the security in public areas. You know. And many other stuff, luggage like store, passenger transportation, the shops, you know, retail operations, food retailing, right? 
ticketing, check in, you know, the, the, you know, different things can be done by outsourcing. So some other companies will do it for you by having specific contract. Okay, that's the outsourcing. The question now, again, there are benefits for that. There, there are advantages and there are disadvantages. The advantages of outsourcing of, or, or the advantages of depending on other company or other suppliers to do, okay, what you have to do, okay, is the ability to focus on core internal capabilities. يعني مثال مثال قال لك شركة سيارات مرسيدس مثلا شركة سيارات مرسيدس هل تصنع كل شيء عندها هي بالمصنع؟ لا طبعا طبعا لا هي بتصنع اشياء رئيسية صحيح بس مش كل الاشياء مثلا قد الزجاج تبع السيارة قد يصنع من شركة أخرى خلال الاوت سورسنج شركة أخرى تصنع على إياها من المواصفات اللي بدها إياها صحيح كذلك حل العجالة هي بتصنع العجال؟ No. And many other stuff like that. So the point of what? The point of outsourcing, why you depend on yourself to do everything, okay? Once there are some other companies can do it better than you, maybe cheaper than you, and efficient than you, or in efficient way. So let's help them. Let's depend on them. So the advantage is here. In this case, you can focus on your main things. Let's say the engine for the Mercedes. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Access to supplier capabilities. We need to know that we cannot do everything if in an efficient way. No. Why? Because we have some limitations. We know some information about some stuff. But but what about the other stuff? We don't know. And even if we try to do it or produce it or make it, it will not be as others. So let's depend on other, actually, advantages of others, strength of others. And this will help us also to reduce what the money that we need to invest in having different stuff and different factors and different, you know, at the, you know yani, uh, hiring people, you know. So that's why fewer direct stuff and as you know some companies can do it with what inefficient way this means low, lower cost so let, let, let's depend on them because they, they know how to do it okay so the, the, the actually these are the advantages but also we have what the disadvantages problem okay risks Always there are advantages and disadvantages. If you depend on others, this means you are losing some of the control. Why? Because you are relying on other companies to do it for you. If any problem happens with that problem, with that company or that supplier, you will have a problem. Two, cost involving in managing suppliers. Because, because now you have more many suppliers, you need to have people to monitoring their work, right? To make sure they're doing as, as you ask to make sure that they are actually following the criteria. So this is actually some cost, yeah, generally. Also reducing the economies of scale. Because what? Because if you do it by yourself, you reduce more, okay? And this will help you to, in a way to be more efficient by reducing the cost, the, the, the overall cost. But anyway, this is the disadvantage, but remember, there are also some advantages. Also, you need to share some information. I mean, I, I, here we talk about the demand information and many other stuff like that. And they may say this is secret or this is sensitive information to be shared with others and maybe can be used in a way to threaten your, your work. It, it have, yeah, sometimes it, it is right. The idea that you, did, you, that you are dependent on other companies, it's a risk thing for sure of what to do. You do Dr. Ahmed, you said this is important. And, on, and, and now you are saying this is dangerous. Yes. Actually, we have matrix. According to that matrix, you can say, this is I will do by myself or in-house, and this is what I will depend on others to do for me. Okay? This is actually the outsourcing decisions. In order to know which one to do it, actually, by ourselves, 
and which one to depend on others to do it, we have two important factors. The strategic value of the good and the service. And once I say strategic value, this means that this, this item or this component or this service, okay, will affect what the competitive advantage of the business. And then it's about the competitive advantage. Again, competitive advantage. يعني ميزة التنافسية. آه خطير الموضوع. And the other factor, it's about the criticality of the component. Once I say it's critical, this means this item or this product will affect the final performance of the product. So it's very important. Type. This is the matrix, guys. So we have strategic value. Again, once I say strategic value, I mean by that, the, what? The competitive advantage of the item. Could be high, could be low. And critical, criticality means it's about what? The, 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 the performance of the product, right? Also, it's high and low. Now, let's start with a simple thing. Very low, sorry, double low. Yani, if it's low in terms of criticality and low in terms of strategic value, so it's not big deal, it's not important. It will not affect the final performance of the product and it also will not contribute to what the competitive advantage. So this is called commodity. And for these items, for this stuff, you don't need to produce it. خلاص, let other people, let other companies, let other suppliers do it for you. That's why in this scenario, this is outsourcing. خلاص, you don't do it. Let Others do it. Because why? Because it's not critical. It's not also strategic or doesn't actually have a strategic value. حلو الكلام. إذا double low, commodity, outsourcing. طيب, what about the double high? Oh, it's high in terms of criticality and high in terms of strategic value. So it's affect the competitive advantage and also affect the performance. So in that scenario, this is a proprietary, means what? In-house, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to manufacture. Please do not depend on other companies to do it for you because this is dangerous. Double low, commodity outsource. Double high, in-house, do it by yourself. Very nice. If it is actually high in terms of criticality, means it affects the performance. Okay, but it's not contributing to the competitive advantage. So, this is also utility, outsourcing. You can depend on others to do it. Why? Because it's not part of your competitive advantage. So, the others can do it, no problem. But the, the last decision is about uh, novelty. Novelty, okay? Novelty means what? It's high in terms of strategic value, so it is contributing to the competitive advantage. Oh my God, it's dangerous now, right? Uh, but it's not affecting what? The performance of the product. In that kind of products, you have the choice. You can do it by yourself and you can depend on others. I prefer that you do it by yourself. I prefer that you do it by yourself. But also, if you have other companies can do it better than you or an efficient way, you can also depend on. So the decision here is yours. Outsourcing is right based on specific criteria. In-house is right based on specific criteria. Is it clear, guys? Clear? Yes, clear. خلاص, we are done with today's lecture, because already we explained the examples here. Let me first actually close or stop the recording. Then if you have any point you need me to discuss, uh, I can do it. This uh, stop recording, stop.